officially kick off our Maxi Life Maxi Care Wellbeing Series. Welcome to Maxi Life, a Maxi Care Wellbeing Webinar Series featuring best care staff that will get effective ways to maintain fitness while working from home and going back to Seattle. Again, I'm Patricia Bermudez. He's on your host for this event. Today's session is timely and relevant, especially since the lines between workspace and personal space are now often blurred. In this session, we will break the habit of sitting. You will know the risk of prolonged sitting and other physical discomforts commonly experienced by remote workers. Discovering a breathing exercise to strengthen your diaphragm, energize your work breaks with simple stretches that help mobilize your posture, raise your heart rate, and center the body. So get ready to do some desk exercises. So now it's time to meet our speaker. Our speaker is an orthopedic and sports specialist and teacher trainer for yoga. He is the founder of PACE, Rehab and Recovery, and the Clinical Director at New York Sports Medicine. With over 10 years experience in the field of sports medicine, he has helped professional athletes and students understand the stressors that can harm physical well-being and ways to maximize the body's potential with well-rounded exercise. So let us all welcome Coach Francis Diano. Hey, Coach. Hi there. How are you? Good, good. Actually, no, not so good. Because like I said, I've been stuck in front of my desk and ah. <laughs> pain. So trust me, all of us that are here in this session, you have our attention. I'm happy. I'm happy to be your guest here, guys. And I'm happy to be of help. You know, um, this is such a timely series. I've been teaching these for years, even before the pandemic. And now that the pandemic actually here and most of us are stuck at home, especially since like we don't have definite spaces for things. It's like where we eat is where we work. I saw somebody posted earlier, they work from their bed. And so <laughs> it's, it's very interesting to see that, you know, sometimes we lose our sense of personal space or workspace and everything meshes together. That's true. That's why we said that this talk is really relevant. And so we're excited. So go ahead, Coach Francis. Um, we'll also be echoing some of the comments that um, our attendees may have on the chat. But please, we're ready to listen to what desk or size is all about. <laughs> all right. So desk or size, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. So actually, the first time I'm really using that, that name for this, but it's basically activity at your desk. Uh, one of the things I really try to emphasize with people is that when you are working from home, there has a lot, it has a lot to do with your setup at home as well. So what we're going to cover today, if you guys don't mind putting on my slides, would be, this is just a general outline of what we're going to look at. So we'll look at the risks that are involved with sitting and just basically working from home, our common physical complaints. So there are three things that people will typically complain of when they are just like in a seated position for an extended period. And last and most importantly, I will actually wanna show you guys how to organize your workstation, all right? Then we'll go over just simple breathing techniques. These things actually will help us later down the road when we're starting to try to cause our body, uh, force our body to relax or when we actually want to be able to get into a mood to exercise or a mood to relax. Next, I'll teach you how to move your, mobilize your posture. The most important thing here for the desk exercise part is actually raising your heart rate because the more blood we can get into your body, uh, plump, uh, pumping through your body, the more we can actually allow the muscles to exercise and work. And lastly, I'll teach you guys how to center your body and how to bring everything back together. And I will teach you guys so that you guys can actually just feel like you're going back to your center and you're allowing your, your, the rest of your body to relax. All right, so if you move on to our next slide, one of the things that I found interesting about this whole sitting pandemic is that they're finding that sitting is the new smoking. Uh, this doc, this professor from the Mayo Clinic actually started to do a research study and started to see that the more a person sits, the more a person actually is putting damage to their body. So one of the things they try to encourage in many workplaces, uh, even pre-pandemic, was they were encouraging standing desks. 
in many different uh in many different companies they would even have go as far as having walking desks or desks that had bikes attached to them so what they're finding is that the less we move the more damage we do to our body and it's no better than smoking all right so if you move on to our next slide uh, if you guys can see, one of the things that's outlined here is that it just shows us how much time we actually sit, spend sitting over the, uh, the span of a day. One of the things I want to point out is that in the Philippines, it's, it's right here on the far right, pre-pandemic, it used to say 1.5 hours. But the reality of it is that if we looked at our travel time to and from, we probably spent a good three hours of just sitting. All right. Now we take away the travel time and we transpose that travel time into just sitting now. So what happens is, what you see in front of you in this slide from the, from the, sleep, uh, from the sitting at work to watching TV, sitting in front of the computer, sitting to eat, and sitting in the car, you basically add that all together, and that becomes a good 14 hours of just sitting. So you can imagine how sitting in its own is actually just like you sitting down or you standing outside and just chain smoking. So you are doing significant damage to your body. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So let's start with this. Let's find a way to organize your workstation. So when I say organize your workstation, it doesn't necessarily mean just putting all of your pens on one side, putting your, putting your cup on one side, and just having things in an orderly fashion. But when you say organize your workstation, what you want to do is you want to find a center space for everything. You want to find a workspace, a workstation for yourself where you can dedicate it just to that. Many of us who work from home end up working on our desk, uh, working on our dinner table where we eat as well, or on our couch, and then that's also where we watch TV. And what tends to happen is that because we are working in the same places where we do other things, we end up multitasking. And so when we multitask, it creates a lot of clutter. It creates a lot of distractions which then causes, the, causes us to actually work harder. And if you notice, sometimes what happens is, is that we become less efficient overall. So for instance, if I'm sitting in front of my couch on my laptop working, and let's say my screen is right here, I could be typing away, but then I'll be, oh, sorry, if you can just move back to the slide first real quick. Um, if I could be typing away and staring straight at the computer, uh, at the TV, because I'm watching a TV series. I could be watching K-drama or whatever else is cool out there. And I could be on my laptop. But every time something interesting happens on TV, I'll just stop and I'll look. And if you notice, my position isn't going to be in the best anymore because my focus is then adjusted. So one of the ways of organizing a workstation is dedicating a space just to work. What I usually encourage people to do is that find a space where you have minimal amount of visual clutter around. So if you look behind me, there's a fairly blank space. So one of the things I definitely in, encourage people to do is to find a blank space so that there are not too many things going on and so you're not visually stimulated, okay? One of the things that I really encourage for people to do as well is Try to find a space where you can make it your own and just say that, okay, this is my dedicated work corner. This is where I'm going to have all of my work things done. And then when I'm not working, I will not be there. So being able to do that makes a big difference in terms of how you are managing your stress levels of home, at home, how you're able to manage your ability to work from home and your productivity level. All right. So for example, you guys, one last thing, you guys are, let's say we're always on Zoom calls. One of the things that happens is that I'm talking to you right now. You see nothing behind me. And the reason I do that is so that I'm not distracting you. But the same reason why I should have nothing behind the screen is so that I'm not distracted and I keep looking up and doing this. Or if something will happen, I'll just do that. So what I like to do is I actually like to choose a blank wall again so that as I stare up, I'm not going to be looking at something behind it. All right. So let's move on to the next slide, please. So this slide was done by our ergonomics group and it was designed originally for people who have workstations. But one of the downsides is that this only works if you actually have a work desk, if you have a desktop, 
if you have an ergonomic chair or an office chair at home. Now, uh, if the moderator, if the my tech assistant wouldn't mind, Danielle, could you could you spotlight me first, and we'll just close the slides. I will show you one way that you can do it at home with a laptop. Okay, so this is just an exercise box I have here. This is a standard laptop. Okay, and so if I were to be at home and let's say working at my working at my kitchen table, coffee table, or whatnot, I would probably be sitting like this, just typing away. Notice my posture. I would be staring down at the screen because if I sit up straight, the screen is down here. So I would actually have to do this to be able to see it properly. Even if I tilt it upwards, I would still have to tilt my head downwards. So that in itself already, is already causing me to hunch over and forcing me into that little ball, which is stressing out all of my muscles here, which many of you would probably complain about. You get neck pain through here. You get shoulder pain. I saw that with somebody earlier who mentioned. Some people will get a lot of back pain, especially down here, because again, there's a lot of this. So one of the things I try to encourage people to do is this. You raise the height of the, of the monitor. Right now, I'm just using yoga block. Sorry, my camera's just focusing. I'm using yoga block. So it raises it this way, but that's still fairly low. So what I'll do then, next is I'll actually just rotate that up. So then I actually have it higher. Now I can just raise my hands up if you notice when they're in this position, they're actually a, they're a lot more relaxed because even if I sag my arms down, my shoulders are fairly relaxed. Some people, if they feel like they're uncomfortable with this position, they just buy an external keyboard. Just place it down here. That works fine also. You know, an external keyboard on Lazada is like 150 pesos these days. It's not, it's not crazy, but it makes a world of a difference in terms of discomfort and pain. But the key here is this, your monitor, it's the level of your eyes or of your face. So that if this thing came flying at me, it would come straight here. And so my head isn't down, but it's centered on the screen. And so now I can actually comfortably look at something. It's the same reason why where you, when you're doing a Zoom call, you actually don't want to be staring down at the at an iPad or a tablet. You actually want to have it in front of you, the back. And the same reason why when I'm talking to you, my screen is actually straight ahead of me and not down on the floor. All right, so we can go ahead and go back to the slide. All right, now, when it comes to sitting, the one, the, one of the most conventional things people encourage them to do is sit at a 90 degree angle, sit, uh, have your knees at a, sorry, your hips are at a 90 degree angle, your knees are at a 90 degree angle, and your feet are at a 90 degree angle. But usually what I encourage people to do is, I encourage them to find the edge of the seat and sit on it just a little bit more, all right? So uh, if you could spotlight me again. All right, so what I do here is I actually sit at the edge of my seat. I don't like sitting like this because what happens now is that when you sit this way, if I can't reach the computer, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna type in this position. So then I'm slouching and I'm putting all that weight on my back. And notice what it does to my hips. When I do that, all of this just pops out. My hips are in just that angle. But if I move my feet back and I sit at the edge, just like that, okay? Then I'm able to actually actively engage my core muscles through here. I can actually restore that natural curve of my back. And so as I'm typing, I'm in a very neutral and secure and I'm in a safe position. And that's the same reason why I don't encourage people to just work from the bed because when you're working from the bed, the only way it's gonna happen is if you're like this. I don't even encourage people to do this because now you're in this position, you're just typing away and it actually is doing, uh, it's doing horrible things for your neck. It's doing horrible things for your hips and you're just like, killing everything through here, all right? So let's move on to the next slide. And we can, there you go, all right? So this is what I try to encourage people. Look at the three slides here. 
Corrections don't have to be extreme. And I always tell that to people. When we talk about ergonomics, ergonomics isn't about being expensive or choosing the fanciest things on the market. Uh, you know, for example, some people will go out of their way to buy a standing desk that they can raise up and down. There, I've seen standing desks that are really fancy. They have a button. You press it, it comes up. They have a button, it comes down. Some of them do this and that. Um, you know, you see all these different things on Lazada. Another time, uh, one thing, uh, one thing first people like to look at also is they have these orthopedic seats. You can see these things like back joys. You can see these things like um, cushion seats. But at the end of the day, you don't need all of those things. You just have to have the information so that you can actually make the adjustments yourself. So ergonomics isn't expensive. It's not tied to a single expensive gadget or a single expensive workstation, but it's actually it's actually tied into the information that you have so that you can apply it to yourself, okay? So let's take, a, let's take a look at this first one, for instance, where the person is sitting down in front of the computer. Take notice that this is what the adjustment we made earlier, where he just raised the laptop screen and brought it up. And so now it's level with his eyes. He can actually sit more comfortably. In this case, he's sitting in the backrest of the chair. I, the only, that's probably the only thing I would change. The next part here is, the way we actually use our cell phones matters, okay? So uh, if you could spotlight me again, that would be great. Cell phones for me are a big thing. You know, when I, when, uh, especially, like, uh, especially with the way people like to work these days, oftentimes we, work, we used to work on the fly. Uh, when I was back in the States, a big thing that a lot of people would do was use their Blackberries. And so I used to get this a lot. People in the subway would be typing away. People in my clinic would be typing away. And it was all about this. And so when people would come in, they'd come to me and say, you know what? I have pain in my fingers. And I have pain in my neck. And I just look at them when, when they tell me that. I was like, but when did it start? I was like, yeah, you know, it really started. It started like a few weeks ago. And, and I can't really figure out why. And I, without them even saying anything, I take a picture of them. And I show them afterwards. I was like, you realize you're doing this the whole time and your neck is in a position where this is all stress and strain. Your shoulders are rolled in and your thumbs hurt because you just keep typing away. I was like, what if we make an adjustment and we try this for a week? Sit up straight. Instead of holding the screen here or your phone here, bring it up so that it's the level of your heart. So that as you're looking, it looks like this. Okay? And then when you're typing, just go ahead and type from this position and tell me how it feels like in a week. A week later, that patient comes back and tells me that, hey, you know what? It actually feels great. I was like, what'd you do? I was like, I didn't do anything. It's just that you're using more muscle and you're correcting your posture and you're correcting your ergonomic position by lifting your, your phone up to the level of your heart. A joke I always say have for people is that the easiest way to remember it is that you are messaging from the heart so that all the messages you send through that phone are going to be sincere. It doesn't always make people laugh all the time, but you know, at least they get the idea. All right. Another thing before I move to the next one is well, actually uh, another one is the iPad. Oftentimes when people have an iPad, they like to watch this way. A lot of this down here, but the problem is not is that again, we are going back to this position. One of the things I actually encourage people to do is you if you want to use an iPad, make sure you have a good holder. So like, for example, for me here, I actually have a, I actually have a tripod and these things are cheap. You know, this whole setup here probably costs less than 500 pesos. And so I have a tablet that's just mounted on a, I have a tablet that's just, that's just mounted on a tripod, just like that. And that's it. And so if I were to watch a TV show, I can just do it like this, lean back, or if I wanted to take a video call, it's the same thing, level of my eyes. I'm not doing this. And again, it's a very simple and basic correction. All right. One of the things we have to always remember is that if we are willing to spend on the gadget, then we should be willing to spend on the, the things that we need to make the small adjustments so that we can continue to use those gadgets. If there's no point in buying a device that's over 20, 30,000 pesos, if we're not willing to spend the 200 pesos, to make it more usable and so that it doesn't destroy our body in doing so. 
Okay, all right, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, next. Perfect, okay. So before we start, one of the first things I always teach people is how to breathe properly. So I'm just gonna move this out of the frame. And the reason why I teach people how to breathe is because when we are going through periods of stress or when we are in repeated postures for extended periods, one of the biggest things that becomes a problem is that we tend to hold our breath. If you notice, when we watch, when we're excited, when we're excited, when we're stressed, when we are, um, when we are stimulated, one of the main things we do is we actually hold our breath. Okay, so imagine you and I were watching a scary movie on TV or an exciting, uh, exciting uh, TV show. One of the first things you'll do is you'll do this. You'll stare and you go, you stare with your mouth open. You're not even breathing. You're just like, and then when the exciting part's over, you're like, <sighs> you're like, wow, okay, that was really, really intense. Or if you're watching something scary or you're watching something, something scary, you're all just like, you're holding your shoulders up and you're doing this. Now, the same thing applies to when you are using your computer or your laptop. If you are using your laptop and you're stressed, and let's say you're coming from a position where you're coming from a position where you're having a hard time. Let's say your boss sent you an email and said, I want all of these done now, blah, blah, blah. You have five minutes to do it. And you're like this the whole time. Chances are you're just typing this and you're holding your breath and you're just breathing shallowly enough so that you can continue to function but then you're not actually using your diaphragm. And what you're doing is you're using these muscles up here. Now, interesting thing about these muscles up here is that these are your stress muscles. So when you are not breathing properly and you're using these muscles to breathe, you're adding onto the stress. And this is the same reason why we get shoulder pain. This is the same reason why we get head and neck pain. And that's the same reason why many people develop migraines it's because all of the tension here builds up from these muscles that run from the tip of the shoulder all the way to the side of the neck and then up until the corner of the head right through here. And that's why it feels like something can be compressed in your head. So if many of you just follow me real quick and if you don't mind playing the video for the, for the, for the slide, this is how a person would naturally breathe without the aid of their shoulders. Take note about how the chest expands and how the shoulders actually don't come up and down. So back in grade school, I remember this, uh, I'm, I'm from Davao and I remember when you used to have PE class and the teacher used to tell us, okay, I want everyone to inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale, all right? So what I want you to do is, if you don't mind, just spotlight me first. Good. So. Back in, the, back in the day, when you're in grade school or during PE class, when you're told to breathe, you're always like, <sighs> that's how we would commonly breathe, or that's how we were commonly taught how to breathe deeply. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you a little bit of a different technique where we're using the right muscles for inspiration or for respiration better, okay? So let's take your dominant hand and place that on your stomach, right through here, and place your non-dominant hand on your chest, okay? So let's just take real two quick deep breaths. So inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale. Notice the rise and fall of my shoulders. What I'm gonna do differently this time is that I wanna fo bring focus or bring attention to this hand that's down here. So that as you inhale, The bottom hand or the, the non-dominant, uh, the dominant hand is the one that's raising and falling, okay? So let's all do this together. Let's take a deep breath for six seconds and we'll do six rounds, okay? So inhale and exhale for six seconds. So in through the nose, exhale through the mouth, Good. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. 
And let's give me one more. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. So why am I teaching you guys this? Well, because this is actually how I like to start my exercises and end my exercises. What you're doing there is you're doing what we call cleansing breaths, where you're allowing oxygen to pump into your body. You're flooding your entire respiratory system with oxygen so that your heart and your lungs can pump all of that oxygen-rich blood into your body, into your brain, into your extremities. It wakes everything up, and it also allows us to flush out all of that carbon dioxide, which is actually the, which is the waste product of your oxygen from breathing. So that's why there's a six second inhale in to allow all the oxygen in. And there's a six second inhale, exhale out so that all of that carbon dioxide or that muscle waste out. So what you're also doing by expelling that muscle waste or that, that, um, oxy, that what do you call this, that used, that used air, that carbon dioxide, by expelling all of that, what you're doing is you're also allowing your body to relax. You're allowing these shoulders to relieve themselves of tension. You're shifting the focus and you're shifting your breath into your diaphragm, which is your main muscle for inspiration. So you're making all those adjustments. Okay. All right. So we did the breathing part. Now we go into the movement part. All right. So if we can go on to our next slide, please. All right. So let's start with something very basic. How do you mobilize your posture from sitting? Well, I like the number six for these things because I have people do them for six seconds and hold them for six times. Those are the two numbers you'll probably see her a lot. You'll see, you'll see six and you'll see 10, okay? So in sitting, um, if you don't mind playing the, picture, the image for me or the, the screen, all you need to do is turn to the side. That's it, hold for three seconds in each side and go. Now, why is it only three seconds? It's because you're not trying to stretch the muscles. You're not trying to stretch the joints in the body. You just want them to move. So I usually encourage people to do this for six repetitions at least and three times each side, or you can do them as much as 10. Now, if you want to challenge yourself and actually stretch this, you can hold it for as long as 30 to 45 seconds. And all you do is you just hold and put pressure. That's it. So if I was in this position, hold that position, hold that right there, and that's it. I'll try the same thing with the other side. All right. Now let's move that on to the standing part. All right. So in the next, uh, if you guys move on to the next slide, please. For the standing part, so you're going to place the first screen. Stand in front of your desk or table, bring your arms over your head and side bend. Good. And as you're side bending, what you're doing is you're actually stretching all of those muscles here through the side. You're opening up those, that tissue and you're also allowing the spine to move, okay? So let's all try that now. Let's do six repetitions. So if everyone could stand up, let's go ahead and do so. All right, so bring your hands over your head. Good. Take a deep breath in. Follow that breathing pattern we did earlier. Inhale and filling this up. Inhale and exhale. Move to the side. We'll hold for six, five, six. Inhale as we come back into our center. Exhale, other side. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, off to the side. Inhale, back to the center. And exhale. We have four more guys. Good. Inhale. You can even reach further up and bring those are those arms closer to your ears and even reach further off to the side as you're doing so. Inhale, come back. I'll do this one from the side here. Exhale. Notice how my body isn't tilting forward this way or tilting back. It's just off to the side as far as I'm comfortably allowed to do so. Just like that. Good, let's do two more. Okay. Inhale, 
and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One last. Inhale. Exhale. And back to the center. So if you notice, even in that single activity, that's actually enough to start to build up the sweat for you or feel like you feel like you're warming up on the inside. And again, these, these exercise workouts, these workouts from home, don't always have to be high intensity, high impact. They don't have to be fast, but these are just motions that you have to do. And that because you are moving and you are using those muscles, your muscles will consume calories. Your muscles will consume energy. And so you'll actually build up a sweat, all right? So let's move on to the let's move on to the next slide, please. Or sorry, the next video rather. So this one's called the world's greatest stretch. It's actually pretty funny because um, they call it the world's greatest stretch because it almost stretches every single muscle in the body as you go through it. Okay. So you, you do it both sides, and that counts as one. That's six repetitions repetitions for each side. All right. So we're gonna try and do that now. All right. So if you don't mind, can you play that video one more time? Sorry, let's go back, play the video one more time. Okay, so notice how in the video, you'll see, you'll see him come down onto all fours, step forward and raise the arm off facing the knee. Okay, walk back, switch sides and lift. Okay, now, Modification for those of you who can't do that, that's okay. I'll show you a quick modification, all right? So if you can spotlight me. So if in the video earlier, you have him down on the ground, oops, you have him down on the ground. For many of us at home, if you don't have the space, it's enough to do it from here, all right? So we do it from here, and then we just lift your hand up the other side, and then bring it back down. And then you bring your foot back up and switch to the other side. Okay, and then lift. The person demonstrating earlier was Paco. He's a strength and conditioning coach, so he can really, you know, he can really do that movement. For many of for many of us, that's actually a very advanced or complicated motion. So let's try the modified version that I'm doing. Now, if those of you are comfortable to do um, you're, you those of you are confident and comfortable to do Paco's, you're more than welcome to do so. So we're gonna do six rounds of that. Okay, so go ahead and. Take that staggered stance, all right? Right there, hand down, up, that's one. Good, switch, that's two. Sorry, that's one, that's one count rather. <laughs> this is two, good. Three, four, five, and the last one, and six. So in that position alone, what you guys would have done is you would have actually stretched your muscles through your chest. You would have gotten the muscles to your lower back to move. You would have gotten your muscles in your legs and in your spine, in your, in your, uh, your legs and in your hips to move as well. Okay. So let's move on to the, I actually started sweating already. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. All right, so earlier, those were just stretches, but if you notice, your heart rate's already starting to elevate. So that was just like a prelude or a warm up to this main set here. So we're gonna do 10 rounds, two to three sets of air squats, step ups or knee to chest, and side to side lunges, okay? And so what we're going to do is, we're gonna start doing them in succession. So we'll do 10 air squats first, then we'll do 10 step ups, then side-to-side -side lunges, 
and then we're going to repeat that two to three times. For many, for those of you who aren't used to exercising a lot or raising your heart rate or who have any condition, what I do encourage you to do is just maybe do one or two sets. Feel it out, okay? And make sure you take a nice sip of water if you feel like you can't, if you can't, um, if you can't keep up or you feel like you're working too hard. Alrighty? All right, so let's play the video first. Thank you. This is an air squat right here. So this is Ophelia. She's just demonstrating that for us. And don't worry, I will join you. So I'll start sweating. This is also your step up or knee to chest. Good. Notice how upright her body is and how she manages to hold that. Thank you. Good, and this is her side to side lunge. So notice the speed and the consistency of the movement that they're going, that she's going through. She's not rushing through it just to get as many repetitions as possible in the shortest amount of time, but she's actually going through smooth and controlled exercises. So that's why this is so important for this. It's so that you can take your time to do the things correctly so that you're maximizing you're maximizing the results of each of the things that you're doing, okay? All right, so let me just load this here. All right, and I will be spotless soon. Can I get spotless, please? All right, so spread your legs shoulder width apart or slightly wider. For those of you who squat, you can actually turn your, if this, these are your feet, you can actually turn them out. That makes it easier. For some of you who like it pointing forward, there's no problem. Believe it or not, there is no one way to do a squat. I always tell people when they do squats, do what's most comfortable for you. Do what works, okay? There's no, you can only squat with your toes forward. You can only squat your feet out. So from here, hands in front of you. You can hold them here or out here. Let's do 10 air squats. Go one, okay? I'll move to the side, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Then we go straight into this step up or knee to chest. So you go one, and then alternate two, three, four. Notice my body's upright. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Sorry, it's, I'm counting up because three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, then we do the side to side lunge. Spread your legs wide. Again, toes can be out or forward, whichever you're most comfortable with. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten, and come back up straight. Take a pause, have a sip of water. We'll do the same cycle over again. And if you notice, like for example, I'm wearing a watch that has my heart rate. My heart rate's already gone up by 20 beats. So you can tell that just by me doing that activity and talking right now, you can see the pauses in my breath. That means that it's enough to actually make my heart work. And I'm a fairly, I would like to think I'm a fairly fit person. So you can, you can see how it actually just raises the heart rate, gets blood pumping, releases those endorphins, kind of relaxes your mind, okay? I already have sweat beads for me. So we're gonna start again. We'll start with the air squats. Let's go. One, two, three, four, 
four, five, see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For those of you who want to challenge yourself, you can even have a water bottle in your head or something with some weight. Some people will hold two books or whatnot to add that resistance. We go straight into the knee, step up or knees, chest, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. Side to side, your side to side lunge. That's one, two, three. I'll just show you from the side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So the reason I just counted 20 is because it's 10 rounds, so it's 10 each leg. All right, that's on our second set. For those of you who want to challenge yourself a little bit more, find something with weight. I'll give you a nice work from home thing. Let's try one of the laptop. This is like standard issue. A lot of people have these these days. These are HP laptops are about 15 inches. Weighs about a little north of uh, three, four pounds. Okay, so let's do the air squats with this from here. Go. One, two, good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Now, many of you are wondering what I do with the knee squat, I'll step up or knee to chest. I'll hold this out here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring this to your chest. Let's go on to the side to side lunge. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good job. All right, that's your cardio set for this one. So if you guys feel like you want a sip of water, go ahead, take a few seconds. Let's go ahead and do so. Some of you may have built up a sweat, so just wipe that off, okay? The next part we're gonna do is some, we're gonna do some cooling down and movement. All right, so let's move on to our next one. Can I have a towel? Okay, towel, please. Sorry, I've started building a stress so I'd ask for towel. All right, so the next round here is we're gonna do three rounds of six breaths each, all right? It's six poses that we like to go through and we're gonna do them in succession. So we do, we start from one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we start up again from one, and then we're and then we start down to six, and we do that three times. Okay, each position we hold six breaths. Thank you, Zell. All right. So 
when you guys are ready, go ahead and load the video so you guys can see the demo. And don't worry, I will suffer through this with you too. And not suffer, but I will do it with you. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and play the video. Good. So notice how she stretches through her spine that actually really opens up all those muscles that are in a flexed position. Okay. And she comes back up. All right. So if you notice, some of these moves might look like they're challenging. There are modifications for them, but when you're doing them, take your time. You don't have to do them as perfectly as, as the person in the video is, or as I would demonstrate, not that I would do it perfectly. But what's important is that you're actually able to focus on breathing, focus on moving. It, should, it shouldn't be like it's working hard for you, but it should feel like you're actually just going through the motion. All righty? So let's go ahead and do this together. You can spotlight me again. So first things first, standing with your arms at the side. See, you're one activity in already. So this is a neutral pose that we actually like to use. It's like basically your most basic starting position. Next, you squat down, lift the arms up. Hold for six breaths. Two, three, four, five, and six. Next, you halfway bend forward. When you bend forward, make sure you're bending from your hips and that you're not doing this where you're actually bending from your hips, sticking your butt out. And we'll take six deep breaths from here. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Now, from that position, what we're going to do next is this. We're going to go into a plank position where your hands are firmly planted on the ground. Okay. Now, for some people, this position might be intimidating for you to do this. So you can also do it with your knees slightly bent. All right. What's important is, is that you hand, your hands are underneath your shoulders, supporting your weight planted firmly, and you'll feel like you're pushing into the ground. Okay. And hold. Four, five, and six. And from there, you're going to slowly push yourself down towards the floor. Just like that, untuck your toes, slowly up, up, and hold that position, okay? So you don't have to be as extreme as some people who like even bring their head back with their knees bent. What's important is that you bring that extension into your back and hold for six breaths, five, six. When you're ready, bring yourself out of the position by going onto all fours, and you can walk your feet to your hands, Stand up straight, hands by your side. All righty. All right. So you do three rounds of that that actually help you get yourself nice and centered. What it does is it actually restores normal motion back into the spine. And so what happens is, is that it actually emphasizes these normal curves of your spine. This is what a spine should normally look like when the curves are there in preference. Typically from sitting all day, our spine will tend to look like this. By doing those motions, we bring your spine back into that nice neutral position. Alrighty. Let's move on to the slides, please. So you can do that another three times. It's up to you guys. So let's play the video quickly. So this is, an, this is the last part of cooling down for what we like to do. Okay. Notice how 
it's basically just three rounds of you bringing your arms up to your side. Arms at a staggered stance afterwards. So these are actually simple yoga poses also. These are called your warrior poses, okay? One of the reasons I like these is because it actually really stretches your hips as you're going through them, all right? And these are really safe for you to do because it's almost impossible for you to hurt yourself in these positions. Good. So if you can spotlight me. So hands are here and I'll teach you guys a more a simpler version of that. Hands are right here. Bring your arms up. Bring your arms down with your breath. The next part you're going to do is without actually touching the floor, all you have to do is take a step forward and take a step back. And the foot behind you, you just take a slight turn outwards. Okay, you take a deep breath in. And you take a deep breath out. Okay, so you're stretching your hip here. You're allowing your chest to stretch, allowing more air in and then out. You do that six deep breaths there and then you switch to the other side. Okay, so let's do this one six times. Inhale, exhale, five more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, two more. Exhale, and last one, and exhale. Okay, next, same staggered position, but what you're going to do now is you're gonna bring your arms out, okay? From this position, you're going to look straight forward at the fingers in front and just take a deep breath, inhale. As you inhale, bring your chest out so that your chest is opening this way. You're stretching all of that tissue in front. So inhale and exhale, inhale, Exhale, four more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and one last. Inhale, exhale. And then we switch sides, just bring it out to the other side. Same thing. Inhale, exhale, five more. Exhale. Bring the chest nice and out. Three, uh, four more. Exhale. Three, two, last one. Arms down, okay? Notice as you're doing that, you're broadening your chest. You're actually engaging your muscles in the back. The muscles, the same muscles that weren't working when you're sitting for so long. So what happens now is that you're able to engage those muscles to keep the chest open, to prevent and to undo all of this. All right, so let's bring the slides back. So the sequences we did earlier, you can find very different variations of those on the MaxiCare website because they will be uploading this video. You can follow that sequence after doing it, or you can also go to these. Two, you can also go to these two Instagram handles. We do have many of these sequences for free available for the public. Just go ahead and do. You can do them. A lot of them are good, great work from home activities or work from home exercises. It's a great way to actually just break the habit of sitting and just get back into fitness. We do specialize in preventive injury management. So our focus is really to prevent you from getting hurt, all right? And for those of you who might have questions that we might not be able to answer here today, that's my personal uh, Instagram handle at the bottom. You can just shoot me a message there as well, all right? Uh, and I believe that's it for me. I might have overstepped my time. 
Oh, no, but it's perfect, Coach, because we really learned so much. I really got out from my chair and all the aches that I was feeling earlier, I feel like it got really addressed. It's interesting. A lot of the questions and the feedback and, and some of the tips that people are asking, we'll get to tackle all of those right now. We actually just want to tell you that we feel really privileged to get to learn all these desk sizes, especially because <laughs> it's really working remotely for long, long hours at their home. So thanks so much for even just the way our our tablets, our phones are supposed to be positioned. That was a big thing. You know, these small changes that we need to do really lead to big solutions. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, personally, I have a lot of questions, but so do our sure. members. So right now, let me introduce you to another expert who will facilitate the Q&A. Our moderator is a fitness instructor, a certified Legree instructor, and Yasa yoga teacher. She is a renowned fitness professional with an extensive background in body weight training, boxing, versa climbing, legree, yoga, spinning, hit, and more. On top of that, she's the host of Plus Network Saturday show on Kumu called All Out. She will join Coach Francis in helping you get in tip top shape while staying productive at work. So let's call her in. Hey, Coach Carla Piscoso. Hey, Miss Pat. Hey, Coach Francis. Hello, everyone. Hi. And thank you for having me. So I, I really like, sorry, I really like the talk, Coach Francis. I, hi, Miss Jade. Um, hi, everyone. Because um, I can relate to it, and I like how it's so witty. That's I can't even pronounce it. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, sure, side. Yeah, but moving forward, actually, Coach Francis, we have a lot of questions. So I'm really happy that the people who are watching right now are very proactive and yeah like i always say this let's make this an open conversation if you guys want to chime in just comment down below and coach francis will answer your question so first question coach francis is what are the best exercises for straightening of cervical lordosis and is it usually caused by bad posture while working at home for years so again, let me just repeat it. What are the best exercising exercises for straightening of cervical lordosis? And is it usually caused by bad posture while working at home for years? Okay, so um, I guess one of the things I want to clarify is that when we, when we say straightening of cervical lordosis, uh, cervical lordosis is a natural occurrence in the neck. So that should be normal. So if this was our spine, and this is the head on top here, we, so this is a spine facing this way. This is actually what it would look like. So it would look like an, in an exaggerated way, an S-shaped curve. So this is the cervical lordosis. So it means that the spine is shaped this way. So when somebody is saying it's straightening and straightening out, it develops what we call like a military neck where you start to lose that. And your head goes from being like this to kind of like this, kind of like a turtle head. So one of the best exercises you can actually do is use a towel for it. Um, it's not so much about just strengthening, but it's about removing the stress from the neck. So you roll up the towel into a roll just like this, bring it across over your neck. And what you do is you're actually going to pull it down towards your stomach and slowly look up. As you're looking up, you're actually placing that extra force in the towel to really emphasize that curve so you're, you're stimulating that curvature in the neck. Oftentimes when there is an element of cervical straightening or the loss of curvature in the spine, that has a lot to do with wear and tear and habit. So if we're constantly on our phone this way, that's what it, it promotes what we call a forward head posture where your head is doing this. If you're on your laptops all the time where you're just typing away, doing that, same thing. I saw a question in the chat box earlier. Is it helpful to have a laptop stand? Absolutely, because then you're raising the level of the screen and you're making it go from here to all of a sudden here. So you see the difference in next angle. There you go. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, and adding to that, I think, right, Coach Francis, if they don't have laptop stands available, they can be resourceful and use books instead. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. And blocks, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no excuses, guys. <laughs> So, you know what I actually tell people? Um, you can use your phone books because I don't know if they still give phone books here. They can use the your magazines. 
yeah. your directory. Yeah, those work well. Uh, but honestly, like laptop stands these days cost less than like just don't order milk tea for two days and you can buy a laptop uh, stand. I kid you not. They're they're true. so cheap these days. Yeah, and everything's online, so it's all about looking to the right shop. Looking absolutely. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next question. What are your thoughts on the Navy? Sur- uh, Navy survival, survival breathing. So Navy survival breathing. Four seconds in, four seconds hold, four seconds out, four seconds hold. Repeat. Yeah. I mean that's perfectly fine. It's uh so the reason why the Navy like uh, they do that they actually train us for Navy SEALs. A lot of it is to prevent them from hyperventilating or developing hypothermia when they're in colder weather. So it's about learning how to control your breath. So oftentimes you have to remember these guys are trained in like the Pacific Ocean or where it's really cold. So the breathing pattern for them matters. Otherwise, when they're placed in cold environments, they hyperventilate and they go <laughs> because there's too much buildup of carbon dioxide or of oxygen rather within the lungs. So creating a pause period in between, whether it's four seconds or six seconds, it's, there's, no, there's no problem with it. It's just a matter of what purpose are you trying to serve? Now, if you want to do that because that's the breathing pattern, breathing pattern you're accustomed to, perfectly fine. There is no issue with that. Yeah, you know what, Coach Francis? I actually started breath work recently, and then after my five sessions, I'm gonna do an ice bath. So I think, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> the, it's it's like about when you're in an ice bath, it becomes hard. It's like it just kind yeah. of like squeezes everything. Yeah, so so you have to do breath work so that you can produce the what they call the G or the energy in your body. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> moving you do on. The, so you from, do the breath, it's like the breath of fire, right? You do the breath of fire they, from they call uh, it the Wim Hof method. Wim yeah, Hof. Wim Hof method. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure if I pronounce it correctly, but yeah. I I just started once. So I just did a, my first session. So I haven't fully um consumed my five sessions yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I'll let you know. Anyway, from Louisa, I have a knee problem. Is there a modified version of the squats? Modified yes, uh, version of the squats, yeah. Absolutely. So one of the things you can do is, or one of the things most common mistakes that people ha- or misconceptions people have with squatting is that when you squat, I will lower my camera a little bit. When you squat, you have to break parallel. You actually have to do this all the way. I just tell people you can just squat halfway. If you really have an issue with your knees, one of the modifications you can do is you can get a, this is a yoga block or you can get a towel, you can get a book, place it between your knees and just slightly, slightly go into a bend and straight. So just don't go too deep into the squat. And if your knees still bother you, turn your toes out. There's no harm in turning your toes out, just a little bit more. When you turn your toes out, your knees actually track a little differently and better. So play with different positions that help I don't know specifically what your knee problem is, but it definitely takes a lot of playing around with and just adjusting to see what works or what suits you the best. All right. So I have a question, Coach Francis, regarding the modification of the squat. If someone asks me that, is a chair is using a chair okay? Like yeah, right. So that's yeah, you can option to... place a raised chair behind you or yeah. like a box. Yeah. So like for example, if uh. This is a little Depending low, but on the like range of motion, right? Yeah. So like right here, oh, yeah. you kind of just tap your butt, so it's more secure. So if yeah. you lose your balance, you can kind of sit. Absolutely, it's a great yeah. cue. We usually use that with people who've lost quad control, maybe because of trauma or a uh-huh. post-operative. That definitely is a good modification that helps or works. All right. Okay. Thanks, Coach Francis. Again, I keep on saying thank you. I'm <laughs> repeating myself. It's okay. I'm, I, I, I'm quite I promise nervous. you that even if you don't say thank you, I will take you it. Know you know, I'm thankful. Yeah. <laughs> All <laughs> yeah. right. Next question is not experiencing, uh, sorry, not experiencing problems for now, but what are the likely long-term effects of having a desk job and not practicing proper posture, laptop height, eye level, et cetera? Okay. So I will take your, our spine as the easiest model for that. So imagine, again, we go back to this is your spine in its normal position. Eventually, what happens is if you don't sit properly, your spine goes into this position because all of the muscles in front, and this is the front of your spine, will be pulling that direction. So it then straightens that part out. 
And then to accommodate for that, this part of your body will pump out this way and this part of your neck will, will straighten out. So in an extreme position, this is what it'll look like. If you were to look at me, let me lower this just a tad bit. If you were to look at me, if I'm sitting like this all the time, which is a more neutral position, but I continue to work like this, imagine when I get up. That's what the effects would be long-term on your spine itself. What would it result in in long-term? Well, the muscles will tend to shorten. We have this thing, what we call cross-pattern tension. So what happens is if the muscles here shorten and tighten up, it puts pressure in the back. The muscles in front will shorten. It will put pressure on my neck. And so what will happen is, is that all of that will kind of fight and put me in this position. So even if I stand up straight, I'll still have that. Yeah. Prevention is better than the cure, always. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you know um, that prevent? Sorry, real quick. Okay. So yes. do you know where? Whenever I talk, whenever I talk to people about prevention, it's not that they're yeah. just doing exercises, but it's about understanding how your body responds to stress. So I always tell people when it's about prevention, it's about the first key there is education. So teaching you to understand or teaching a person to understand how the body responds to stressors or what stressors are the ones that affect you will make you less likely to actually do them so that you don't hurt your body. Rather than you find out the hard way, it's like, for example, you see fire, you know it's hot, so you don't touch it. But then rather than you touch it, you burn your hand, you get a scar, and then you're like, okay, I don't want to do that ever again. But at that point, you already did damage. Yeah, it's like life. <laughs> it's like life, like, right? It's like <laughs> life. learning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, uh, next question. Are there any specific relief methods for headache related to muscle strain? Okay. So are there any specific relief methods for headache related to muscle strains? Okay. Um, I think I have an understanding of what their question is. Uh, if it's work-related, uh, first thing I always tell people about, about, about uh, headaches is this. Right now, I'm talking to you. I actually have a ring light in front of me, and I have multiple spotlights around me. I so it's very too. bright. <laughs> but if you notice, when, you're, when you're that brightness is there, Carla, the buffer and you end up squinting a lot, and you kind of are trying uh -huh. to avoid staring at the light because it does, it does actually force you to kind of blink a little bit more yeah. and work harder. Now, take note, when you blink, that's the muscle working. When you squint like that, that's the muscle working. And that muscle runs from here around your eye to the side of your head and through the top. So that constant firing of that muscle, blinking to accommodate the light or squinting to limit the light, adds I, I, pressure I, to your I'm head. Squint. <laughs> exactly. Because you're squinting, I'm squinting. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the first things I try to actually encourage people to do is to dim their screen. I tell them to funk, use the screen functioning at 50% or 30 to 50% of the brightness, especially if you're going to be there for extended periods, because then you're not straining your eyes, which then reduces the likelihood of headaches. The second part is, is that if your headaches are because, like, let's say your neck muscles are strained or because this is already tightening. So like I said earlier, if this muscle tightens up, it puts pressure on your head and in your neck and it compresses all of that, you can go back and default to the same towel exercise I gave where you're just going through that motion of relieving that stress. I don't highly encourage people to always stretch the muscles just because you're sitting for too long because there's a tendency for the muscle to already be strained and tired so that if you stretch it, it actually causes the muscle to tighten and spasm. So I'd rather mm -hmm. somebody gets up and moves around and so that they, they can actually break, that, break the lost motion that they're, they're having. So I hope that answers the question. I think so. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> without, so, without knowing the specific I, one, I, I hope that so, answers. Yeah. It. yeah, but I have, I feel, I feel like I have tight straps too because I lift a lot. Mm -hmm. So is trigger point therapy okay, Coach Francis? Yeah, or you'd rather, point. or, but not depend on it, right? Like do other things so, also. So trigger point therapy works, works, works well, actually. Uh, that's one of the things I, I actually teach. But I always tell people, it's great when you're trying to solve a problem. But if you're using it, if you already know what the cause of the problem is, and you just keep having that trigger point therapy because you want to eliminate that, then that's not exactly a permanent solution. It becomes a band-aid solution. So for example, for your instance, you like to lift a lot. So then you know you develop a lot of trigger points here. Yeah. One, thing, one thing that's worth finding out is 
how are you listing that causing all of those trigger points to form yeah. because that means that you're only using this muscle group here and that you're not loading the rest of the muscles in the body okay so trigger point therapy is fine um some of you like to refer to trigger point therapy mm -hmm. as or make know it as like myotherapy a hard massage uh some of people say my hangin so my hangin the muscle lamig 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 lamig, lamig sorry yeah, hangin yeah. is like in bisaya parang my hangin Air. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay and at the end of the day that all just highlights that a muscle is worked too much and so having the therapy for that undoes that but then if you're constantly having to have it that means that you're constantly abusing the same muscle and it's worth figuring out why you're using that muscle so much because you could okay, be hiding a bigger problem now <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you coach francis again uh next question what are exercises not safe for persons uh, for per, for a person with scoliosis? I actually have scoliosis, so mm -hmm. but I already have a titanium rod in my back. Yeah. Remember, so I don't I don't know if it's the pre-operation or post-operation the person's referring well, to, but yeah, I think scoliosis is a, such a vague and so just so everyone knows what scoliosis is. Okay, this is your spine, and this is your butt. This is it facing forward. Okay. So this is the front of the spine and this is the back. Okay, so this is the back of the spine. Scoliosis is when the spine curves to the side like this. All right, and with the curvature of the spine, there's that rotation of those segments. Okay, so there. Now, the question is, is that what exercises are safe and not safe? Well, it's hard to say if you don't know which direction the scoliosis is in because you can have scoliosis to the right side, to the left side. You can have what they call uh, F type of scoliosis or a compensated one, or you can have a C type of scoliosis, which is a non-compensated one. But I will tell you this, the, safe, the one exercise you definitely want to avoid when you do have scoliosis is you want to avoid overhead compression. So when you're doing weights that push down on your spine this way, you definitely want to avoid that because then what happens is, is that if your spine is ready in an S-shaped curve, you would be compressing it further downwards this way. Or if your spine is in a C-shaped curve, you're compressing it this way. Because your spine does not have the normal loading distribution pattern that it typically would if it was in a neutral position. So I would just avoid that. Um, it's a very, it's very vague question, but I would definitely see somebody who specializes in scoliosis exercise. And actually, that's the beauty of, like, for example, you, Carla, because you've had it, you already know what not to do. So when you talk to somebody about it, you can kind of tell them, it's like, well, this is what you have to avoid. I would know. I had it. I have it. Yeah. Right? But I kind of, sometimes I'm hard-headed. I kind of do the snatch, but it's overhead. <laughs> well, yours is different because you have a metal rod that corrected that. So yours is already yeah. in a neutral position. But for somebody who doesn't have it corrected and then they do that, it's a different. I think we have a lot of questions left, but you gave your contacts, uh, Coach Francis, so they can reach out to you. I'm going to turn over the floor to Miss Pat, Miss Beautiful Pat. Oh, thank you so much, Carla. It's amazing that how, whenever you guys were talking and having a discussion, I really felt like I was having a consultation because a lot of the issues that were asked, actually, these are things that were also uh, things that I also have been going through. But to close us, Coach Francis, may I ask you for your final message to all of our MaxiCare members here? Okay, so one of the things I will leave you guys with is this. Start with breathing. Okay, everything starts with your breath. When you take the time to pause and breathe, it neutralizes your bad positions in your body. It allows you to bring in oxygen. It allows you to expel all of that excess muscle waste and all of the excess uh, air in your body. And it allows your body to relax. It introduces endorphins, which are your happy hormones. So when somebody is stressed out and they need those happy hormones, pause and take a deep breath. And that'll actually make a world of a difference. And most importantly, like Carla said, prevention is better than cure. And so you guys have a little bit of a menu here of things that can help prevent injury. So go ahead and take advantage of that. You know, be thankful that MaxiCare is bringing this all together because it's a big advantage for a lot of people who don't have access to this. 
right? And that's why MaxiCare really wants everyone to live their best life, particularly their members who are in attendance, who I'm sure are so grateful. Thank you so much, Coach Francis. And of course, Carla, we will be watching out for your posts on social media, Carla and Coach Francis. I'm also looking forward to maybe calling you just like a lot of our MaxiCare members here and maybe look at your social media also for advice. Thanks so much to both of you. What a great, great- Absolutely. Story. To our thank attendees, you. thank you so much for participating in the Q&A and being so engaged also throughout this entire event. For those who were engaged, speaking of engagement, during our earlier game, remember the two truths, one lie activity earlier? I'm sure you guys are ready to find out if you are one of the winners who will get to win those bookie vouchers for a premium account where, like I said, you guys will win a lot of free food and services using that account. So here are the ones who were the first to get the correct answer. Shall we show them right now? Congratulations to Justine, Brianne, Tiza, also to and Michelle Salazar and Owen Galang. You guys are the winners of our two truths, one lie, and the great, great bookie voucher. Congratulations. Please provide your name, contact number, and your email address on the chat box right now. Uh, if you guys can do that, because our MaxiCare members will be talking to you about claiming your prizes. Thanks so much. For those who didn't win our icebreaker game, I think that don't worry, guys. Again, we just want to remind everyone that you can still win exciting prizes just by answering a survey that will be sent after this event. Five lucky participants will win a MaxiCare cheese board and cutlery set or a leather laptop bag. The survey link will be sent through an email now this is the correct date may 18 and that's a tuesday right so wait for that email on that day and then on may 24 the winners will be selected and contacted by max care for the delivery of their prizes now we have some poll questions are you ready because before you guys go we just want to pick your mind further so just pick or select the answer that best suits you in these poll questions and here is question number one now that you have all this information about proper desk or size, are you ready to make the needed steps to live your best life? Remember, the question saying, you know, all these little changes, even buying a really affordable uh, laptop thing that can raise your laptop. Yes, I love that everyone is willing to make those changes from what they learned today so that they can live their best life. 99% of you guys. Amazing. Here is my next question. Which? Among the desk or sizes that you learned today is your favorite. Oh, there's a lot. Um, did you really like or your favorite? Of course, you like everything. The one for posture, the exercises for the posture, or exercises that raise the heart rate. Or what about steps to improve your body? I like, I like that one too. Yes, most of us, and I share that with you, most of us really need and really like and will really benefit from all the exercises, but particularly that the exercises that were shared about posture. Here's the third one. Which topics or activities would you like to see in our next Maxine Live webinar series? And you guys can choose more than one. Do you want to hear more about coping with stress, taking care of your eyesight, COVID-19 vaccines, or how to strengthen your immune system? Of course, when it comes to Maxi Life, MaxiCare Wellbeing webinar series, we always try to um, Give you guys the most relevant uh, topics but a lot of us uh, apart from taking care of, of our eyesight which is one of the popular topics that you guys are going for it's really strengthening our immune system and that's always going to be a relevant topic so watch out for that one now if you if you, if you enjoyed this experience please do share it on your social media using the hashtag live your best life and hashtag MaxiCare, MaxiLife webinar, and you can type MaxiCare on their Facebook at MaxiCare Healthcare Corp. Don't forget their IG also. It's important to also contact them or follow them at MaxiCare Healthcare and also their health and wellness IG at MaxiCare Health and Wellness. And of course, you can tag them when you guys share your wonderful takeaways from this event. Who knows? You guys can help other people with your desk or size experience. Don't forget to subscribe on their YouTube channel as well. Please do look for MaxiCare Healthcare Corporation. Now to learn more about MaxiCare's products, please visit www.maxicare or .shop.maxicare.com.ph or you can send a message to their FB Messenger. If you have questions about this webinar, you may send them an email. And of course, it's at MaxiCare webinar at maxicare.com. 
www.mexicanwomenstudies.ph. You can learn more about their MaxCare webinar series and we have to send it on an email. So I guess I'll see you guys on the next webinar, which will be on June 18. Please put that on your calendar and it will be at 5 p.m. And guess what? We'll talk about financial wellness. Wow, right? Financial wellness. Well, that ends our event for tonight. Thank you so much for being here with us. We hope that you enjoyed and you were able to take away really great, meaningful information as I stretch and continue all that I've learned. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great night. And we know that with MaxiCare, you can all live your best life.